The subscription website OnlyFans, known for its adult content, says it will delay making changes to prohibit sexually explicit photos and videos from October. It follows a backlash from the site's users. The platform also said in a tweet that it would continue to provide a home for all content creators. Wariness from investors was originally cited as the reason for last week's announcement. Here's one user of the platform, Mary Moody. I believe that enough sex workers are finally getting heard by everyone and we're making enough noise and we're finally getting noticed. And people are realizing that this is a human rights issue and a workers issue and it's, it's not okay what's happening. Well, joining me now from Los Angeles is Mike Stabile. He's a director of Free Speech Coalition, a trade organization for the adult industry and its workers. Mike, thank you very much for being with us. What's your reaction to OnlyFans delaying this ban on adult content? Well, I think that in the short term, it's a great uh, it's a great decision. I think that there were a lot of workers who were about to be devastated financially uh, by the new rules. And I, I think that in the long term, people are really looking at and trying to figure out um, what are the next steps? We understand that banks uh, are increasingly skittish about adult content, particularly sex worker produced content, and that we're in the midst of a uh, morals campaign by religious groups in the U.S. that are they're trying to use their pressure to pressure banks to deplatform sex workers. OnlyFans is technically open to all content, but what makes it particularly appealing as a platform for sex workers and adult industry workers? Well, first of all, it's important to realize it came from the adult industry. This is a good example of the industry pioneering um, a new sort of technology. And what made it appealing was that, you know, you had these uh, adult performers and creators and sex workers who had built up these huge followings on social media, on Instagram, on Twitter, on Reddit. And it gave them a way to monetize it. It gave them a way to bypass the studios, bypass the agents, and sell directly to the consumer. And what that did was it allowed them to build equity. So rather than shooting a scene for a day and taking a paycheck and going home and, and not seeing any more from it, you could produce something, you could earn from it, and you could earn from it um, you know, indefinitely. And that was a game changer for these, uh, for these workers. The announcement of this ban uh, came after a BBC investigation earlier this year that found that underage people were allowed to create accounts, start using the platform. Should sites like OnlyFans, which do take a cut of the money, be doing more to protect children and prevent uh, illegal content from going up on their platform? Absolutely, and they do. I think that what, what it gets lost in this discussion is just all of the regulations and all of the, the protocols that are in to identify uh, people who are you know, looking to game the system. I think that you know, there is ID matching, there's facial recognition that's uh, done by AI, there's ID verification, there's matching that everybody in the, the uh, content that you create is also represented by the IDs. What happened is, is that this is a site that grew very quickly, right? You had, it went from a small number of people before the pandemic to I think close to 3 million creators now. So the question isn't whether or not sites should do more. I think that all sites are doing more. Adult sites have always been at the forefront of this because they know that culturally they're much more liable than someone like Facebook, which ends up posting a lot more illegal material. Um, so it's not so much should they do anything or should they be doing more? They are. And what we should do is learn from the mistakes, learn where people are trying to game the system and how they're getting around it and improving it. It's, it's, I, I don't think that it's an either or. Mike Stabile from Free Speech Coalition joining us from LA. Very good to talk to you. Thanks for being with us. Thanks so much.